everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States. Through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories, I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. It's episode 154, My Cup of Tea. How are you doing today? I hope you're having a nice day wherever you are in the world. I hope that you're safe. I hope that you're happy. If you're not happy, I hope that you find this podcast a positive and upbeat place that you can turn to. Today, we have another expression episode. As usual, expression episodes come in two parts. In part one, So this episode, we'll start with a joke. I'll teach a common expression used in American English. And at the end, we'll go through some pronunciation exercises in which you need to repeat after me. In part two of this episode, you'll learn about one of the most iconic events in U.S. history, the Boston Tea Party. It's one of the major events that fueled our fight for independence from Britain. And the story is just nuts. It's not your average tea party. It's a crazy one and really worth learning about if you don't know about it already. It's also worth learning about if you're interested in the very beginning of the United States. If you're curious how the U.S. was created and what led to our independence. If you're taking the U.S. citizenship test anytime in the near future, you can't miss that episode. On that note, I've created a webpage on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com for those of you who want to prepare for the U.S. citizenship test. I have a bunch of different episodes that cover the material you may be asked about, and in my opinion, it's better than memorizing information. You get stories, and all of this is free. So do check out that webpage. You can find the link for it in the episode notes. Let's begin today's episode. As usual, we'll start with a joke. Why didn't the Englishman drink the cup of coffee? Any idea? It wasn't his cup of tea. (laughs) You probably are aware that the English drink a lot of tea. They've got that reputation. What's funny about this joke is the wordplay with his cup of tea. When taken literally, we understand that the cup of coffee doesn't belong to him. The coffee wasn't his cup of tea. So naturally, he didn't drink it. Why would you want to drink someone else's coffee, right? Now, there is a figurative meaning to his cup of tea. When something is our cup of tea, it means we enjoy it. We like it. It's something that pleases us. If something is not our cup of tea, and notice how I'm already saying cup of tea, (laughs) not cup of tea, um, it means that we do not enjoy it. It doesn't suit our tastes or interests. We don't like it very much. So perhaps this Englishman didn't drink the cup of coffee because he just doesn't like coffee. He likes tea. Let's listen to the joke one more time. Why didn't the Englishman drink the cup of coffee? It wasn't his cup of tea. All right. So perhaps it didn't belong to him. Perhaps he didn't like it. That's the wordplay. I like that. It's simple. I bet you understood it without my explanation. Thank you for being patient and Let's move on to the next section. Let's go through the individual word definitions 
for cup of tea. Cup. A cup is a small and typically cylindrical shaped container used for drinking liquids. She sipped her tea from a delicate porcelain cup. It's also important to note that cup is very general. If you want to pour a hot beverage into a cup with a handle, you might ask for a teacup or a coffee cup or even a mug. Of. Of expresses the relationship between a part and a whole. It indicates belonging or association. A slice of cake was left on the plate. Often you can't hear of, we just say a, uh, a, uh, slice a, a slice of cake, a slice of cake, a cup of tea, a cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, note that because it does help improve listening comprehension if you know that of is often reduced to simply a. Uh. And then tea. Tea is a hot drink made by infusing dried and crushed leaves in boiling water. It's typically served without milk, occasionally with it, occasionally with honey. Popular tea types include chai, Earl Grey, English breakfast tea, peppermint. There are just so many options. In the morning, she prefers tea to coffee, so she likes tea more. So where does this expression, cup of tea, come from? In British culture, tea has played a significant part of daily life since the early 20th century. It's believed that the expression emerged around 1920 and stems from the literal act of drinking tea. As with most food and drink, people have their own tea preferences. Some like certain strengths, certain levels of sweetness, or different varieties. People have certain preferences. Now, over time, people started using my cup of tea, his cup of tea, their cup of tea, outside of the world of tea, just to indicate one's personal preference. Teaching English is my cup of tea. It's what I like. Cleaning the dishes is not my cup of tea. It's not what I like. So here we are. Today, you can say that something is your cup of tea if you like it. And I want to stress that you can use it with anything that can be enjoyed. Music, art, food, activities. When something is your cup of tea, it's your jam. It suits you. It's to your liking. It's up your alley. So those are some synonyms. And when something is not your cup of tea, it's not your jam. It doesn't suit you. It's not to your liking. It's not your thing. And it's not up your alley. Now, we'll go through a few examples just so you can hear how it would be used in everyday conversation. Example number one. Imagine your friends are arguing about what to watch for your weekly movie night. One friend suggests Twilight, which is a teenage drama about vampires. Your other friend suggests The Shining, which is a classic psychological horror film starring Jack Nicholson. When your friend mentions The Shining, you respond, Now that's my cup of tea. In other words, that's what I'm interested in. The Shining is my jam. It's more suited to my interest than Twilight. It's what I like. It's what I prefer. It's my cup of tea. Example number two. Back when I lived in New York and Berlin, I used to go out to clubs with friends. And it took a long time to realize that clubbing is not really my cup of tea. Or perhaps it just took a long time to admit it. Sometimes it was okay if the music was good and the group of friends was fun, but for the most part, 
my expectations far exceeded reality. I remember thinking I'd rather be out for dinner, chatting over a glass of wine. As much as I want to like clubbing, it's not my cup of tea. Example number three. Imagine that you come to the United States as an exchange student, and your new host mother is excited to have you try local specialties. Since she's Hawaiian, one of those specialties is spam. Spam is canned pre-cooked meat, usually a mix of pork shoulder and ham. While you're open-minded when it comes to food, you truly think you'll throw up if you eat the spam. And that's okay. If she offers it to you, you can say, thank you so much, but I'll pass. Spam isn't my cup of tea. To be honest, I really like this example because it illustrates something important. I feel like the negative form, not one's cup of tea, is more common than the affirmative because it's become a non-offensive and very popular way to reject an offer. It feels softer and more polite than rejecting with a hard no. Do you want to go to the concert tonight? Nope, sorry, that band isn't really my cup of tea. In other words, I don't particularly enjoy the band. Their music doesn't suit me. They aren't my cup of tea. But it doesn't sound as bad as saying, I don't like the band. You know, the band isn't really my cup of tea. Sounds nice. Now, because it feels more polite, I encourage you to use this in your refusals. Although, do try spam. See what you think. It's definitely something that is Very popular in Hawaii because historically it's been a bit of a challenge to transport meat to Hawaii and spam stays preserved in the can for quite some time. So it is really popular there. That's it for the examples. Let's move on to the pronunciation exercises. We'll begin by using the statement, that's not my cup of tea. Sorry. Repeat after me. That's. That's not. That's not my cup of tea. Sorry. That's not my cup of tea. Sorry. Let's go through the conjugation. I wasn't his cup of tea. You weren't his cup of tea. I wasn't his cup of tea. You weren't his cup of tea. He wasn't his cup of tea. She wasn't his cup of tea. It wasn't his cup of tea. We weren't his cup of tea. They weren't his cup of tea. I could either say cup of tea or cup of tea, cup of tea, of, of, of like a light, light F there. That just depends on the person and yeah, how quick they're speaking. Usually if they're speaking very fast, usually it reduces to cuppa, cuppa. Now this conjugation is sort of funny. It makes me wonder, in what circumstance would someone say that someone is not someone's cup of tea? The teacher wanted to expel the students. They weren't her cup of tea. It's a very funny way to say they're not pleasant. We don't really like them. Anyway, that's the conjugation. In episode 139, we went through the expression up one's alley. Do check that out. It's pretty much a synonym for my cup of tea, but it's a great way to get extra practice with expressing your preferences. Of course, it's very important to be able to do that in everyday life. So listen to that episode, 139. 
Other than that, be sure to stay tuned for the next episode, which will be all about the Boston Tea Party. See you next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.